Howdy. My name is Buster Nees, and I'm the creator and lead developer of AzuraCast. AzuraCast is a free and open source web radio management suite. It's one of the very easiest ways to start up a new web radio station, complete with all the necessary software already set up, and a powerful web interface to manage everything you need to keep your station running. Think of it like a web radio station in a box. Our goal is to make getting started in web radio as easy as possible. And thanks to our friends at Linode, it's even easier with their one-click app marketplace. You can find the AzureCast one-click marketplace app linked on our own installation instructions at azuracast.com or by searching the Linode marketplace for AzureCast. Click the Deploy This App button to get started. You'll be prompted to sign into your Linode account if you haven't already. Once you're in the Linode Manager, the AzureCast app will be pre-selected. You can choose which version of the image you want to use. Which one you choose is up to your preference, since they all work the same. Next, pick a region for your instance and choose a plan. We recommend one with at least 2 gigabytes of RAM, with more depending on how many stations you plan to run. Audio transcoding tends to consume about the same amount of CPU and other resources at all times, so you'll be able to tell quickly whether you need to adjust your plan. Set up your other details, and you'll be ready to go. We strongly recommend enabling Linode level backups, as they're an easy, hassle-free way of protecting your station, including its media and settings. Once you're finished, click Create. After the server's been provisioned, your first step will be to finish the setup process via the web interface. Yeah, that's right. You don't need to spend any time in the shell to get started. In the Linode Manager, you'll see your new server's IP address. Copy that and paste it into a new browser tab. If you don't see anything at first, just give it a few minutes, as the provisioning process is probably still setting up the installation. You'll be greeted with the first step in setup, creating a new administrator account. Enter your email address and a strong, unique password, and continue. The next step is to create your first station. If you want to, you can take the time now to go through all of the various configuration options that are possible with your station, but don't worry, you don't have to. You can change any of these settings later if you want. All you have to do to get started is to give your new station a name, and everything else is defaulted to what we consider to be sensible settings. Click the Save Changes button at the bottom to continue. The final step is to customize the system settings for this AzureCast instance. By default, we set the base URL to be the installation's IP address, but if you already have a domain or subdomain ready, you can point that domain to this installation via DNS, then update this URL accordingly. Just like the new station page, you don't need to worry if you're still setting things up. You can change these settings anytime later on. Again, Click Save Changes at the bottom to continue. You'll be taken to the main AzuraCast dashboard. This is the homepage from which you can manage all of your stations in one place and view how they're doing with performance metrics and unique listener charts. We're excited to get started broadcasting, so let's jump right into our first station by clicking the Manage button right next to the station name. This is the station's profile, an overview of everything you need to know about this station all in one place. This page shows what's currently playing, what's scheduled to play soon, which key services are enabled, all of your public-facing streams, and the status of the underlying services. If you didn't change the settings before, you'll be using our recommended defaults. Our Auto DJ is a tool called Liquid Soap, which offers immensely powerful customization for your playlists and can transcode and broadcast the same signal anywhere you need in many formats. And our broadcasting front end which listeners connect to, is IceCast, a tried-and-true open-source tool that can handle thousands of connections without breaking a sweat. On the left side menu, you'll see links to manage every detail of your station. Let's go through these. First is a link to a lightweight public player page that ships with every AzuraCast installation. It's small, simple, and gets the job done. You can also embed this same player into your own homepage if you want. And if you're sadly not a fan of our amazing unicorn mascot Azura in the background, you can customize every aspect of this page's CSS and JavaScript from the custom branding administration page. Anyway, back to station management. Next is the Music Files page, also known as the Media Manager. 
If you're making heavy use of your auto DJ, you'll get to know this page very well. Let's get started with the media manager. First, I'll make a new folder to make things easier to keep track of. Let's drop into that new folder and upload a few songs. I've got some tracks here that are royalty free tracks from the YouTube audio library. You should always make sure you have the rights to play anything you broadcast, including researching what the royalty requirements are for your country. These tracks take a moment to upload, and then, there they are. We automatically pull things like album art and ID3 data from the files as we import them. Let's say you want to add these files to a playlist, which is how they get played via the Auto DJ. You could check every single file here, but let's go the easier route and go up a folder to the main directory. We'll select the folder, click Playlists, and pick the default playlist that's automatically been created for us. This playlist shuffles its contents and plays through it every hour of every day. If we save these changes, you'll see that the folder itself is in the playlist. Now, anything you upload into this folder will automatically be added to the playlist. Speaking of playlists, let's take a look at the playlist page. From this page, you can create new playlists, update or remove existing ones. There's a lot you can customize about every playlist, so we'll just cover a few of the most essentials. On this tab, you'll see the basic settings for the playlist. One of the most important settings is the playlist type. Playlists can be set up to play alongside other ones, or to play once every few songs, or once every few minutes, or once per hour. The other tab I want to cover here is the Schedule tab. If you don't have any scheduled items for your playlist, it'll play all day, every day. You can create new schedule blocks so that the playlist plays from a certain time to another time, or from a given date to another date, or only on specified days of the week. You'll notice on this page that the station time zone is referenced. Each station in AzuraCast uses a single time zone across the whole web interface to simplify operations. You can change this time zone in the station's profile. Let's move on. Out of the box, you can accept connections from incoming live streamers. We use our Auto DJ to manage these connections and to seamlessly fade in and out from live broadcasts. For security reasons, this feature is disabled by default on new stations, but enabling it is as simple as clicking this button. Once enabled, you can create new streamers the same way you manage playlists. You can even schedule when streamers are allowed to connect. On this page, you'll also see the necessary connection details on the right sidebar. Almost every DJ client that supports streaming to a web radio station supports either IceCast or Shoutcast connections, and we support both out of the box, regardless of which broadcasting software you use for listeners to connect to. You may have noticed that when streamers were enabled, another link popped up on the sidebar called Web DJ. This is a really neat feature that we include, which offers a basic DJ interface directly in your browser. You can queue tracks on different playlists, play audio from your own microphone, and mix the signals together live without needing any additional software at all. Let's get back to the station page. The mount points and remote relays pages let you tell the auto DJ where and how to broadcast your composited radio signal. Mount points are located on this Azure Cast server directly and broadcast with the software that's already included in it, while remote relays are external software hosted somewhere else out on the web. Setup-wise, the two are very similar. By default, we include a single mount point that broadcasts at 128 kilobits per second MP3. For better or worse, it's something of a gold standard in the web radio world. Let's say you want to add a mobile mount point, though, that has a lower bandwidth but uses a higher quality codec to get more out of the signal. We can click Add Mount Point and then fill in all the necessary details. Then we have our new mount point, broadcasting the same radio signal alongside the original one. Both mount points will be selectable on the public pages, and you can find listening links for both on the station's main profile. Webhooks are another very powerful feature baked right into AzureCast. With webhooks, you can trigger external events when certain things happen on your station, like when a song changes or when a DJ connects or disconnects. These let you build external integrations into your station without ever needing to modify the core AzureCast code. Here are the types of webhooks you can create today. We're always working on adding new integrations based on what our users need for their stations. Of course, 
What would a web radio management suite be without statistics and metrics about your station? These live in the reports section. The statistics overview shows you listeners by day, hour, day of week, and your top and worst performing tracks. Other reports include live listeners, a history of track playback for your station, and custom reports for duplicate or unprocessable tracks in your media manager. Now let's leave the station manager and go back to the dashboard. If you look at the top right, you'll see a little drop down menu. If we click this menu, we see a few things, but namely a switch theme button. Let's click that and ah, much better. <laughs> Let's quickly drop by your account profile. This page is super basic, but it lets you set up things like two-factor authentication. Avatars are automatically pulled from the Gravatar web service, so you can manage them there. Now let's hop over to the system administration page. This page links to the powerful things AzureCast administrators can do to customize and control their installations. And it also gives you a quick overview of the status of your server and what we call synchronization tasks, which are housekeeping tasks that run every 15 seconds, minute, five minutes, and hour respectively. Here are some highlights of what you can manage from this page. From system settings, you can change the same settings that you set up when you first installed AzureCast. This includes the system's base URL, security settings, privacy settings, and connections to external services for certain functions. The custom branding page lets you insert your own custom CSS or JavaScript into both the public facing pages like the radio player or the internal administrative pages. This lets you add your own branding or change the color schemes of pages if you want. Using storage locations, you can switch from the default local storage to using an external service like an S3 compatible storage service or Dropbox to host your media, DJ recordings, or backups. Speaking of backups, we have a built-in web-based backup utility that will let you generate a complete backup of your installation that can be transferred or restored at any time. As we mentioned before though, we also recommend using Linode's server level backup tool as it makes restoring in place much easier. From the user accounts page, you can create, update, and remove any user on your system. This lets you assign secondary administrators for individual stations or to delegate administrative responsibility to other people. The permissions page lets you define roles with specific permissions. Some permissions are global to the installation, while others are per station, and both can be mixed within the same role. These roles are what you then assign to users in the user management page. The audit log is a very powerful tool that keeps track of every major change to your AzureCast installation since it was first installed, along with which user made the change. There are other administrative settings, but for the sake of brevity, we'll skip past them as part of this video. You can always spin up a server of your own to play with everything and familiarize yourself with the system before running your production radio station on it. Before I go though, I want to talk about two things that happen outside this web interface, but are also very important to know. The first is the AzureCast API. Our API is very powerful, allowing you to do almost everything you can do from the web interface programmatically and enabling third-party integrations that are limited only by your imagination. You can find our full API documentation along with sample request code and responses at azurecast.com slash API. The second is updating your installation. While we aspire to make everything as simple as possible, for technical reasons, there's one thing we can't securely include in our web interface, and that's updates. AzureCast is always changing though, with new updates coming out on our rolling release channel almost every day. So you'll most certainly wanna update your installation from time to time. Even though this requires hopping into the Linux terminal, we've made it as easy as possible. Update instructions are available on our website, but just to show you how simple it is, let's go back to the Linode Manager page and click Launch Lish Console, which will drop us right into a terminal instance right here in our browser. If possible, we recommend using the Glish option for AzureCast servers. You'll be prompted to log in with your credentials. Once logged in, you'll be dropped into a terminal as the root user. From here, updating is as simple as doing three things. Typing cd slash var slash azurecast to drop into the azurecast installation directory on the host server. Typing dot slash docker dot sh update self 
to update the Docker utility script, a little bash script we created to help make updating and other tasks super simple, typing dot slash docker.sh space update. You'll be prompted to back up your installation. Then we'll pull all the latest images for Azure Cast and apply any necessary updates automatically. After that, you'll be done and you can go right back to managing your radio station. I hope this walkthrough of Azure Cast and our integration into the Linode one-click app marketplace helps answer your questions and get you excited about spinning up your new web radio station. If you have any other questions, visit our website at azuracast.com for links to our GitHub repository and to join our Discord community where you can chat with other station operators and the developers of the software. Thanks for watching.